Okay, so we've talked one sample t-test, now it's time to talk two sample t-tests. But remember, I'm about to cover two independent variables. If you want to do two dependent variables, then you'll need to use a paired t-test, which I cover in a different video. So our data here represents the ages of people who think that Captain America is a very lame superhero. So we have their ages, 45, 54, 36, and then we have their genders as well, where zero represents male, one represents female. Before we start coding, let's talk about the purpose of a two-sample t-test. The purpose is that given two sets of data, you want to compare their means and then make inferences about the means of the two samples. So let's say we're given these two samples, mean age for males, mean age for females, and at the end of this, we want to be able to conclude, say, the mean age for females is less than the mean age for males. Or maybe you just want to simply say that the mean age for females is not equal to the mean age for males. Those are the kinds of things you can test with a two-sample t-test. And fortunately, the code for the two-sample t-test is incredibly similar to a one-sample t-test. So we can just say proc t-test data equals demo. And we'll specify our null hypothesis. In this case, HO is equal to zero. Now you might be wondering why we're just saying equals zero. This is equivalent to saying that they're equal. So we set our null, mean age for males is equal to mean age for females. Well, that's the same thing as just saying mean age for males minus mean age for females is equal to zero, same thing. Then we're going to specify our alternate. In this case, we're saying mean age for males is less. So I'm going to put an L here. If you want it greater than, you could do U. And if you want it just not equal to, you could do two there for two tail. Then we'll put our semicolon. Now we need to specify our variables. What we want is age broken down by gender. So we're ultimately going to have their age, but we need to say now, we want you to break it down by gender. So it'll be class gender here. Now we're set up and ready to roll, so go ahead and run. And everything looks good. And let's start analyzing this printout. Now, for those of you who have used a two sample t-test before, you know that you have to determine whether or not you have pooled variants. What I mean is that we're given two statistics here. We have pooled and then we have non-pooled. Or in other words, our variances are equal or they are not equal. Now, unfortunately, we need to do an entire uh, second hypothesis test before we can even determine which one to use. So we're going to go back and set up a new test here and we're going to perform an F test for pooled variance. And this is really the first test that you're going to have to do when you're performing a two sample T. So ultimately we want to perform the two sample T, but the first thing that we have to do is this F test. Now let's set up our null and our alternate hypotheses for this, the null is going to be pulled variance. Then the alternate is going to be non-pulled variance. In other words, we're saying the variance of the first sample is equal to the variance of the second sample for our null. And then the alter uh, alternate hypothesis, we're saying that the variance of the first sample is not equal to the variance of the second sample. And the purpose of doing this is that the calculation will be different depending upon if we can assume pooled variance. If we can assume pooled variance, then we use this method. If we cannot assume pooled variance, then we use this method and this p-value. So now fortunately, there's no other code we need to write in order to test uh, the hypothesis for the f-test. The f-test is just automatically calculated in the two-sample t, and right here is the uh, chart that we need. We have a folded f with an f-value of 3.93 and a p-value of 0 0.29. Now let's just assume that our alpha is 0 0.05, which is a pretty standard value for alpha. So if we're saying that we have a p-value of 0 0.29, well that's greater than alpha, which means we fail to reject. So we fail to reject the null here, which means that we assume pooled variance. If we're assuming pooled variance, now we can go back and now we can attest 
our null hypothesis for the t-test using pooled variance. So now we come up to this chart and say, well, we're using pooled variance. The t-statistic is 1.5, and now the p-value is going to be 0 0.9. So 0.9 is a very large p-value, so that is not going to be less than our alpha, which means, again, we fail to reject. So let's go back to our hypotheses here. This means we fail to reject the null, and we can conclude that the mean age for males is indeed equal to the mean age for females. And just to show you now how to do a two-tailed test, let's say instead of testing the mean age for males is less than the mean age for females, let's just test that they're not equal to each other. So let's say not equal to, exclamation point meaning not here. Mm -hmm. Then we would come down to sides and we would say sides is equal to two. And now when we run, we should get a different p-value here. Okay, looks good. Now notice that our p-value has the absolute value around the t. And we have a different p-value. We're still using pooled, but it'll be 0 0.18 this time, which puts us closer towards rejection, but with an alpha value of 0 0.05, we're still going to fail to reject since the p-value is not less than alpha.